I just had this like white woman moment where I was like, wait a minute, the song is called Party Up In Here, isn't it? It's not just called Up In Here, Party Up In Here. And this guy's saying, y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me act the fool. It's not about being annoyed. That's the white people interpretation. <laughs> 20 years I've been doing, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but if the song's called Party Up In Here, then that's, that's how he's talking about a party. Holy shit, have I just been living in this head like this the whole time? Like, I feel, oh my God, I can think straight again. It was just unbelievable. So getting on a plane and going to see my family after feeling like my brain was fixed was a little anticlimactic. <laughs> and that when I took this new medication for my ADHD last week, I started weeping openly the first night I was on it because I didn't realize I could feel such relief. So maybe I already had my big bang moment, you know? Me and my medication are like the soldier and the nurse uh, kissing in Times Square after World War II is over. You know that famous picture? That's me. I'm, I'm holding my bottle of medication and, and kissing it passionately in the street. Um, the war in my brain is over. But I don't know. So I don't know. Maybe it just felt like... I'm grateful. I mean, I don't want to feel like I lost a year of my life because I don't feel like I did. I did not believe my dentist when he said that's why I was like, no. I don't clench my teeth anymore. I used to do that back when my anxiety was worse. I'm fine, I'm loving this pandemic. I'm binge watching Better Call Saul. I never had this kind of time before. I'm not anxious, I don't feel anxious. I'm doing that thing I hate when people do, when they think anxiety is necessarily something you literally feel like, oh, I'm nervous, you know? Then a month later, I need a root canal because a nerve in my tooth is dead. From clenching. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine. I guess I probably have anxiety in my sleep. And that's why I'm not feeling it. Because it's manifesting other places. That sneaky anxiety. Thinks it's helping me. Oh, I'll just be anxious when she sleeps. It had been so long since I had stupid conversations. How's your day going? What are you in town for? Like, that I'm fine with it. Because it is, that is the only benefit of the pandemic. Is that when you go to rent a car... And they're like, what brings you to town? Like, actually, you know what it is? It was a joy to not be on tour. It was a joy to say to people, I'm visiting my family. And because there's just been a pandemic, they don't ask me the next question, which is, you see, when I used to visit my family, it'd be like, why do you live in California? Oh, they look at my license. Oh, Los Angeles. You know, and then are you an actor? Are you a writer? And then you're like, yes. And they're like, I don't know you. You're a loser. He says, uh. Hey, that's a great outfit. I'm, t I'm not kidding when I tell you what I was wearing. A old black sweatshirt, just no brand name, nothing fun on it, just a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants, sneakers, not even fun ones, just, hey, I'm a suburban mom going for a jog, here are my Asics, and a black puffer vest. But it wasn't like that off-duty celebrity look. You know what I mean? You know that look Angelina Jolie has when she's in her casuals and she's going to adopt a kid and she's got her Ray-Bans on and her, you know, like cargo pants and like her white button-down shirt, but it's just like perfectly messy. And you're like, that's a great casual look for like picking up another kid, you know? And I said, oh, well, thanks. And he goes, yeah, all black is cool. And I'm just laughing like, well, I mean, it is if you're in like leather or something, but this isn't an example of an all, it doesn't like it. You know, it's like Johnny Cash saying man in black, but he didn't sing man in black sweatpants with a puffer jacket. What would the 17-year-old version of us think? Would that 17-year-old version of us be like, oh my God, 46 and 47-year-old me is like kind of cool, but I don't know if I would think I was cool. I mean, I hope I would. Fuck you, 17-year-old Jen. If you don't think I'm so much cooler than you were, you're out of your fucking mind. Like you've got shoe box, shoe polish, out of the box, dyed black hair. You're wearing coats that are way too big for you. I mean, you could wear, you know, a long kind of like Robert Smith coat and have it be flattering. Like you didn't have a tattoo then. You thought smoking made you cool. I mean, it is kind of cool. But now I have asthma. Thanks a lot, 17-year-old Jen. So don't you dare, 17-year-old Jen, think you're cooler than 46-year-old Jen because I'm fucking cool. I'll have you, oh, excuse me, 17-year-old Jen, have you been to Paris? No, I didn't think you had. No, that's it. That's a, I'm just saying, look, 
you know what? Just say it. All of a sudden, I hear this. Just three loud knocks. Now, my little bedroom den that I'm staying in is about 10 feet from the front door. And it didn't sound like someone was knocking on the door. It sounded like they were knocking on glass. It sounded like they were knocking on the window. <laughs> and I was too afraid to look. But it was loud and it was knuckles on glass, three knocks. It wasn't a woodpecker. It wasn't one of the cats. It wasn't the heater. And I went, uh, I'm sure there's an explanation. I, I'm, I'm, you know what? It's probably the heater or something. I'm just going to 